Uh, I don't care what your politics is, but I'm pretty sure you agree this guy has swagger, right? You're here to essentially be a little bit more like him. I happen to like this guy a lot, uh, but I think he has swagger, and this is what this talk is about. Let's get moving. So first thing is, let me mention to you that it's an honor to have Tony uh, be part of uh, uh, this presentation with me. Tony is the VP uh, at Smart Bear for Swagger. He happened to have created, invented Swagger, and is still involved. And, and the best part is, a lot of you know me, and you might have even heard about this, this talk and this work that uh, Mohammed and I uh, from IBM Research here started. But what's cool is, Tony told me yesterday, uh, I'm gonna add a few more things. And I was like, ah, cool, we'll chat about it today. And what he showed me just blown my mind. So much so that we kind of like decided, okay, instead of doing the demo that Mohammed and I had as part of the talk, we're gonna use his demo. So you're gonna see this. I promise you, if you were doubting Swagger, listen to Tony. And That's a lot of pressure, we'll talk about, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, well thank you very much for that uh, really easy setup. Um, so who, who here uses Swagger API? Yeah, some people, not enough people. Let me um, start out with a couple of things. Um, I'm gonna first uh, talk to you about what Swagger is. It's really just a mechanism for describing APIs. It's for explaining what the contract is between a consumer and a service, right? Seems like something pretty simple. Um, we'll go through that more in detail. I think this guy can explain what Cloud Foundry is. Sure, I'll try. Okay. <laughs> oh, meaning now you want? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think we'll get to it. We're we'll, on let, a tight timeline let, here. Let's so. get to it. Yeah, yeah, let's get to it because I think what we want to do is get to the point where uh, we're past your demos. These yeah. guys know about Cloud Foundry. We'll skip. We'll, we'll skip to it. Okay, yeah, go ahead. So, back to this in a minute. Okay, so back to what Swagger is. Many people, when they say what's Swagger, they say, well, it's a pretty UI. Um, a UI is part of it. It's, it's a, a very interesting part of it. It's actually, in my opinion, not the most powerful part of what Swagger is. Um, but at its core, Swagger is a contract for APIs, right? And not a strict contract, more, a, a little looser. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, if, it is, uh, if an API is correctly described in Swagger, um, it should be enough to both produce the API or consume it, right? It's important. It's not enough to model it or make it look pretty or make docs. It's really enough to consume it and understand everything about it. So if you say that you call something and you get back a horse object, you should get back a horse object instead of a cow object, right? So we want things to be really clear so that consumers don't have to guess. Um, there is a very rich tool set uh, ecosystem out there. Um, there's thousands of projects on GitHub. Um, some of them are better than the ones I work on, maybe. Um, but there's lots of things to help you get things done because it is a contract, and once you have a contract, you can do amazing stuff. And very importantly, it is a, uh, the Swagger specification was the foundation for something called the Open API specification, which means we donated Smart Bear, the company behind Swagger, donated the spec to the Linux Foundation so that lots of people can jump on and, and contribute to it in a neutral fashion and move it forward as a standard for describing web services. So that's really exciting. I can go into that in much more detail later, but now that there's all this pressure for a demo, let me get towards that first, right? So um, at, if you want to be uh, a consumer of APIs, you have a, or a producer for that matter, you have a couple of choices. Um, what do you call, what is the, the API endpoint, what is the, the parameters, all that sort of thing. You can read the docs. So you see on the right-hand side, service broker docs here, version 2.8, very nicely created, but still created by a human and still have to be read by a human. Um, a machine can't understand those very, uh, very easily, right? Um, if you want to consume it, you have to uh, have a nice SDK. If you're lucky, sometimes they've got dependencies you don't like, it's not the language you like, whatever. Everyone complains about SDKs, and sometimes I don't blame them. The parameters, the inputs uh, that go in, what is a payload that comes in, all of that sort of thing. And then as a provider, meaning the producer of an API, making all this stuff and describing it is hard. Making SDKs is even harder because you don't always have the ability to write 50 different languages of, of, uh, of client SDKs. 
Uh, users are uh, great to have, but they're, they can be annoying, especially when you're not doing a good job, because then they say, well, you didn't do this, or this is wrong, so that's all hard. Um, and also, in general, boilerplate blows. I don't need to say much more about that. So um, Swire can help in a number of ways. Um, there's different techniques for producing APIs. You can write code first. Uh, a lot of people are doing this thing called design first. Um, and once you design an API, you can generate automatically with right, the right tooling clients and servers. And that your job then is really to work on business logic, right? And that's a lot more fun than writing plumbing. So if you've ever written routing tools and integrated some new framework that has lots of bugs, that's not fun. Like your boss is gonna be happy if the business logic works really well. So Swagger is trying to help solve that. And iterating, right? Making changes to your definitions, um, having the code follow it, everything being up to date, being able to iterate quickly, that's a really big deal, and Swagger helps with that. Some of the tools, the things that Swagger can help with, um, the uh, interactive editor you see here, I'm gonna show more about this, but it's a mechanism to do a design first API, meaning I will use a syntax, uh, validate it against a schema in here, um, and I can design and visualize that API as I want, as I work on it. Inside, you can see some of the, the, the constructs of a, of a Swagger definition or open API spec definition. Um, in here, there's a path called catalog. There's a summary, right? It's human understandable. This is not a hard syntax to understand. If you've ever tried to um, create a WSDL by hand, right? Like this is a dream come true. Um, here we're saying that the, the description for the operation, what kind of code it produces or format it produces in JSON, uh, a description of the responses, it says it's an array. I don't need to check and see if it's an object or an array. It's telling me exactly what it is. Um, and, and then I can just really explain all of these different aspects of what the, um, what the API wants, right? And there's a great ecosystem of tooling. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through this here. Uh, this is a screenshot of uh, a, a project that I work on called Swagger Hub. Um, and it helps give you the ability to um, kind of centralize these definitions and then bring them into your application lifecycle, right? So um, why does this matter uh, to this project, Cloud Foundry? Um, well, let's say that you are in the business of creating a new, um, a new service, right? There's things that you need to do in, in order to produce a new service, to consume and fit in the ecosystem that you're all working within, um, you need to do a couple of things. Implement the broker API so that something can connect and get a, a proxy or information to connect to your service. You need to implement the service, and then you need to make an SDK so that those, uh, your consumers can actually call it, right? So let's, wa let's walk through how uh, Swagger, um, working inside uh, Swagger Hub can help out with that. This is an amazing demo that he totally set me yeah, up. Yeah, so, so I guess in, in some ways to set up Usually I would go through explaining Cloud Foundry and things like this, and I figured, we skip it, most people here, you should probably know about Cloud Foundry already. But the important thing is that Mohamed and I, we created a bunch of description for different part of CF. And what you're gonna see is one of those description and what Tony was able to do with it. And hopefully that will convince you that we should take all of CF and add Swagger to it. So, okay. you'll see. All right, so. Um, since I'm lousy at typing and talking at the same time, I made a little screencast, but, so, but I, I wanna walk you through what this is. So this is a, a product called Swagger Hub. You can go to it. It's, it's a free tool for API lifecycle management, design, um, build, deploy, and integrate. And so what I'm gonna focus on is the, um, the process of taking uh, well-written definitions um, and turning them into a real service, right? So the first thing here is, if I go in here and I search for CF demos, I have um, three definitions that uh, Max actually uh, built, or Max and his team built. And these are explaining different aspects of, um, of services, right? And we take this one, the uh, CF broker. Here is a definition that is effectively the interface. So he's gone and described how you need to connect to uh, the broker interface. You need to implement this. To, to, uh, 
to be compliant with the 2.5 API, you need to implement every aspect of this, of this API. Now, you can go through, again, you can read docs by hand, and you can make all these endpoints. You can say, okay, there's a slash catalogs path. Um, I need to add this. There's query parameters. I have to do all these things. But he's gone through and done the hard part, which is describe it in this, in this definition format. And here you can see what it looks like. I can look in the UI and kind of scroll through it. And here's the service instance uh, API, right? So these are all mandatory, correct me if I'm wrong, they're mandatory operations that if you want to make a compliant service, they have to implement, okay? So because they're all described, um, I can do something pretty neat. Um, I can go and do something called fork this API, right? And so when I fork it, I'm going to bring a copy of it. It's pretty much analogous to the, from the source code point of view. I'm going to clone, essentially clone this definition and bring it into my own project, right? And by bringing it into my own project, I can now do something with it. So imagine this is a read-only one. I'm going to now materialize or instantiate this API, right? So here I bring it into my own project. I give it a name, a version. Um, I can choose whether it's public or private, and then it's done, okay? So that's exciting, right? So now I have my own copy. You can see the URL changed. It's under my username, Fegai or Fegai. I actually don't know how you pronounce it. Um, but now at this point, I have a copy of this. So now remember I said that um, Swagger has a whole tool chain for generating code. And the code can be generated, and you can do different things with it. I can generate a server and then download it. I can generate a client and download it. Um, but that workflow is not that great uh, in that every time I make a change and I download it, then the files, what files do I merge? And so in, in Swagger Hub, what we did is we made a, a mechanism to generate code and push it directly to a repository, okay? So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. If I click this gear, there's something called an integration. And there's different integrations here I can choose. Um, I'm gonna focus on GitHub. And so what's gonna happen is, is as I create this integration, I'm going to link my definition directly with GitHub and the code generator. So notice there's different generation targets here. So I can generate code in all these different formats. Um, but since I'm creating a uh, broker, I need to generate a service or a server that's going to respond to REST requests. So I'm going to, um, because I'm a creature of habit um, and can't learn any new languages, I'm gonna generate a uh, JAX-RS version of this service. Of course, I could do different uh, languages. I could do Go, I could do a uh, PHP if I wanted, or Ruby. Uh, but here I'm gonna do a JAX-RS version. And when it generates code, I get a couple of options, right? So the worst thing would be if I'm generating code, I'm pushing it into a GitHub repository, and then I go and I implement something, and then uh, I, I generate it again and I blow over all my business logic, right? So that, that's not the idea. We want you to have control over the code that you actually implement. So I can here say, if a file doesn't exist, go ahead and create it. If it does exist, leave it alone, right? So that's what this is here. This is called a provided path. There's other things I can do, like have fully managed paths. So it just says, like, if I'm gonna rename a model, I need to blow it away, uh, put, make a new one. Let's let the code generator just own that. And, and then files that I wanna ignore, right? So by creating this integration now, every time I hit save, what'll happen is the back end will go generate the code, it'll sync it with the GitHub repository and then push it, right? And so the beauty now is that without any, doing any coding now, I now have um, this project, CF Broker, and a generated server, right? Explains where it comes from, links to the open source, so you can tweak it and do whatever you want. And it actually will completely run. So now imagine all that plumbing that I normally have to do, all this routing, that sort of thing. It's just been done for me, so that's probably really small. Uh, you can read it. Okay, so I, cl I clone this repo. I can immediately build it. And um, with any luck, um, I can actually run the server. Okay? And you have a fully working server, which we can uh, launch. I can jump into a browser. I can view the Swagger definition. And then I can even make a call to one of the endpoints, in this case, the catalog endpoint. Right? 
And of course, this doesn't do me a lot of good because it just says magic. But now, note here, this is the implementation. I just cloned this and just read it, so this all got pushed to GitHub. All I have to do now is implement these methods. And in this case here, there's a um, catalog method. I implement this. The framework has taken care of all of the plumbing so that you just work on the business logic and, um, and implement it. So then at that point, um, if I do every method, I have a fully working uh, broker application, right? So no code or anything like that, um, but kind of this whole control. And then, the, so the beauty of this mechanism is that the interface that you must implement, right, the framework and all the plumbing and the routing and the parameters and all the options get, get, um, get done for you, and your job is this one thing, which is implementing the interface. Okay, so now I've got the broker. I can do the same thing with my service um, and then plug it into the pipeline and then I've got a, uh, a working application really quickly. And you don't have to work inside of this particular language. You can work inside of any of the supported languages um, really easily, right? I think I take this back. Cool, so what you saw is essentially somebody implementing a service worker uh, without having any knowledge pretty much about the details of service worker just by going to the specification. I mean, this is the power of, of Swagger, right? Uh, obviously, Tony knows Swagger very well, but you saw the steps that he did. It's not unlike anything you could do. So what we were trying to do with CF Swagger, which is the, the incubation project, is to sort of like motivate people for doing this kind of things. I mean, if this is not enough motivation for you, then we have even more. So one of the things that we tried to do uh, in the project CF Swagger is to look at how we could essentially uh, document most of, of Cloud Foundry, at least all of the external APIs. And then obviously, as Tony was asking, the question is, you don't want to just describe it, you want to have value. You want to bring value to the different projects. So if we focus again on the service broker, what we found out is in addition to the demo that Tony showed, which is essentially now, all of a sudden, all of you can go and implement your own uh, service broker very quickly uh, in different languages as well, which is the great part, and keep it in sync with every time the service broker is updated, uh, one of the obvious questions that came about for us was as we operate, since I work for, and, and Mohammed as well, work for IBM, when we run service brokers on Bluemix, uh, one of the big issues we started having is uh, compatibility of the service brokers. Because uh, as the specification got updated, not all of them are using Swagger because that didn't exist on, at that time. Most of the service brokers have to manually go update their service brokers to support the new API. So one obvious thing that we could try to find out is, can we know which service broker is supporting which version of the API? And that's what we did. So we started looking at essentially creating what we call the test compliant kit uh, for service brokers. Uh, in, in some ways, um, it's similar to, uh, if you're familiar with Java and uh, you know, in the past, when Java had JSRs and they provided also a test compatibility kit, a TCK that you could run against your implementation of the JSR, that's the same idea. Except, guess what? We implemented that TCK without writing a lot of code. We wrote a generator of the TCK. So every time the specification gets updated, similar to how, you know, what Tony showed you where he generates a server, uh, we also created a generator. So part of the Swagger ecosystem is to allow the creation of those tools so that you can take the Swagger specification that you have for your API and generate something useful, such as a TCK, such as uh, the servers, or such as client code. So we did that. Um, what we had to do uh, as part of our specification, which is the same specification that uh, Tony used, is to add a little bit of extensions to it. So for instance, we added this X version uh, extension to essentially specify that this particular operation in the specification got introduced at version 2.6. So obviously you have to start at one particular version. So what Tony showed you is version 2.5. And if you go to version 2.6, then the new specification for that has these small extensions. 
Uh, and this is all valid. So as part of Tony designing the Swagger specification and now with the open API, they kind of looked ahead and saw that there's gonna be cases where people wanna add something extra to the specification because you, know, you can't really think of everything ahead. So these X dash are ways for you to essentially add a new annotation to the specification. So we did that. And then you, and another one is, for instance, dependencies because uh, one of the, um, one of the things that we want to do in the TCK is to run it and be able to specify that, oh, when you try this broker against this TCK, uh, it failed at these operations. So that way we will know that the broker did not implement the version, but also which operation failed. But obviously because the operations can kind of depend on each other, this is a way for us to say there are dependencies across operations. So that's another one that we added. Um, this is kind of like a high level overview. There's actually uh, a video of the demo. Uh, not sure we have a lot of time to cover the whole video, uh, but uh, there is a GitHub, I'll point you to it. But the way to think of it is that we take the Swagger specification like we have here, and we use this thing called Go Swagger. There's different sort of clients for Swagger uh, in different languages. We happen to have implemented all of this in Go. Uh, but you could have implemented it uh, other, other ways. Uh, and what we essentially created is a way to generate a TCK out of the Swagger specification plus a series of templates for what the TCK looks like. So what ends up happening when you run the generator is you get a new TCK or a test compatibility kit, which is essentially a series of Ginkgo tests. Right, so similar to how the rest of Cloud Foundry, if you're familiar with, uh, say, Diego or, or Bosch Agent or uh, Bosch Init, a lot of the components that are written in Go, uh, we use uh, ONC's uh, Ginkgo and Gomega framework to um, generate test cases. So those test cases become the TCK. And then you can take that and then spin up your uh, um, service worker and run the test against that service worker. Uh, there's very minimal specific, uh, configuration you have to do, but you, you essentially do that. And then at the end, we tell you which version. Uh, so this is the demo. What I'll do is, I, I, we don't have time for the whole demo, but I will open it up and then show you towards the end what's happening, is that we, um, we show you here like how all of this thing gets set up, and towards the end, um, like uh, I think maybe around here, you can see that we run the test and at the end we, you can see here where we specify that, um, like for instance right here, uh, that the number of tests pass and that the TCK compliance is 2.6 but in 2.5 it's also 100% compliant. If you go through the whole demo, we show you how we take a service broker and modify it so that it is compatible with one version and then we uh, make it incompatible, or we start in, you know, not compatible with 2.6 because there is like a parameter that gets introduced in 2.6 that is optional. And then when you run the test, it shows you that the test failed on this one. And then you implement that, run the test again, and it passes. So this is all available in the GitHub project. So I'll let you, we have a pointer to this video so that you can take a look at it. Uh, but we did more, so let me get to that. <laughs> um, so, what we also, uh, I guess this I need to get to, yep, I see. So what we also did was to, um, to look at, well, what else existed like this, right, to do a, a test compatibility to kit. Well, so it turns out that Bluemix had a little bit of, of a set of tests that they ran against service brokers, but it, exactly has the problem that we've been discussing, where if you have a description and you're generating things from the description that you avoid. The test was stuck in version 2.3. And why? It's because we basically, IBM, hired an intern and a set of interns to implement the test. And then they implemented at the time they did their internship. And then it's stuck there. So you can now hire more engineers to go do more of that work. Or if we go with our approach, every time you regenerate. So that's, that's the value of Swagger, right? I'm, we're not saying we're gonna replace engineers, so don't, you know, that's not the message here. But there are a series of things, you know, boilerplate code, things like 
test where you are looking at a specification and you're trying to implement that, or the server side piece of it, or the client side piece of it, uh, we can fix that problem for you, right? We can make it a little bit easier. Uh, so obviously, one thing we wanted to do, uh, I come from research, Mohammed is in research. We uh, did a survey to sort of figure out where people had their pain point uh, and whether or not this would be a useful thing to them. And what we found is most people thought it would be very interesting and, and most people from the results, and you can find all of this online, uh, were not doing anything like this. They were essentially either implementing their own tests like we were doing in Bluemix, or some of them were not even doing that. So you would bring on a service broker that you say in your platform, I support version 2.6, and you have no idea if that service broker is gonna support that version. Or like when next version 2.7, how many of your service brokers are implementing the next version, right? So, so those are the issues that we found out. So you can go through the survey and, and you'll see that overall most people thought that they would be, they would have, they, they found uh, this work to be useful. So what I would ask you, uh, and we'll stop for some question is, you know, go explore, um, you know, not only Swagger, but also the CF Swagger. Uh, it's essentially, if you do a search for CF Swagger, you'll find it, it's uh, github.com, Cloud Foundry Incubator, CF Swagger. And then let us know, I mean, come to the Slack, uh, you know, you'll find a channel also called CF Swagger, and, uh, and let's discuss. So let me thank you and see if you have any questions that we can try to help answer. So thanks for your time. Don't be shy, there's a microphone. Even if you, like, you think it's useless too, that's fine too. Nobody, all right, cool. Another perfect demo, Max. I guess, yes. yeah, you uh, did it, uh, man. Yeah. All right, well, thank okay. you very much. Thanks a lot.